Welcome. Uh, this is the Daily Devotional from the Church of the Palms, and my name is uh, Pastor Stu Broberg, and I am one of the visitation pastors here. Let's take a few moments to focus our hearts and our minds by listening to some beautiful music. The scripture uh, for today comes from the New Testament, book of 1 Peter, the first chapter, and the fourth verse. Hear the word of God. Uh, we have an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. 1 Peter the first chapter, verse 4. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. Let us pray. Great God, and now come to us in these moments. Uh, send forth uh, your written word through your living word, the Lord Jesus Christ, and through your active word, your Holy Spirit, and write it upon our hearts in these moments. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a little phrase in, um, it's the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church. I think it's the 1946 edition. And it says, uh, the tie with heaven the tie that we have with heaven. It's referring to our loved ones who have passed away. And its point is that these people who've gone on to be with the Lord are our tie, our connection with heaven. And I like that, uh, that concept and that idea. Uh, many, a uh, few years ago, my uh, dear sweet mother, uh, who was in decline, uh, and she had dementia, and uh, the last uh, two years of her life, she came and she lived with me. So every uh, evening I would come home, uh, generally after my last church meeting, and I would uh, uh, walk her into her bedroom, and she would get ready for bed, and then I would tuck her into the bed, and it would sort of quiet her a little bit, have her have a sense of peace. And then I would take her hand uh, after a, a moment or two, and then I would pray with her. And then I would sit there with her until she finally would drift off to sleep. And I did this. This was so natural to me. It just felt so natural. And so I'm praying for my mother uh, one evening. 
And all of a sudden I thought to myself, well, of course it's natural because uh, every night when I was little and when I was growing up, uh, I would get ready for bed and my mother would uh, uh, tuck me into bed and she would take my hand and she would pray with me. And then uh, I would uh, um, pray, you know, uh, my little prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. And that, um, so it was circular. It was uh, this beautiful uh, sort of spiritual moment um, that was perfect. And it was beautiful and it was significant. It was an inheritance, you might say, that I had received from my parents, from my mother. It was a beautiful moment. Our scripture uh, from 1 Peter speaks of an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Uh, so the inheritance that we have through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through his life and his death and his resurrection, uh, through what he has done for us that we uh, could not hope to do for ourselves, this inheritance is imperishable, which is to say it does not pass away. Um, everything in this life passes away. Uh, uh, we do. Our bodies uh, pass away. Um, uh, things, institutions pass away. A uh, day will come when the strongest, most beautiful building will uh, crumble into dust. Uh, but this promise, uh, this inheritance that we have through Jesus is imperishable. Um, it is also, um, it is also um, uh, undefiled. Uh, and I think what that means from that Greek word that's there is that it's perfect in and of itself. It doesn't need anything to be added to it. It doesn't need anything to be subtracted from it. It is the perfect work of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he shouts from the cross, it is finished, it is completed, it is accomplished. It means that he has done everything that is necessary uh, for us to inherit eternal life. It is, and nothing needs to be added or subtracted. It, would only defile it. So it, this inheritance for us is undefiled. Uh, and it is unfading. Uh, everything in life, uh, you know, fades away. My eyesight is fading away. I have to get stronger and stronger reading glasses. Um, you know, my, uh, my health, uh, you know, I'll just say I I'm, don't feel the same way that I did when I was age 40. Uh, all these things fade away, but this inheritance that we have through Jesus is unfading. In a way, I think it only gets stronger and more vital, and the light shines brighter and brighter because, you know, as we get closer to that moment ourselves, when we will pass away, this, these promises, you know, this inheritance becomes more and more important, and it becomes more and more vital for us to see our loved ones ones once again. You know, I, I want to see my parents again. I want to see the members of my congregation again. So it shines brighter and with a light that comes from eternity. Um, in my former uh, church, um, uh, there was a beautiful stained glass window and it was the resurrection window. It was the window of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, being resurrected from the dead. And right where I would sit before I would get up to preach, that was the window that I could see. And so I would look at that, and I think particularly after my parents passed away, it, it was significant to me to see this image of the resurrected Jesus. And I think it's a good thing, you know, for a pastor uh, to be thinking about that right before we get up to preach. You know, to be thinking about and to be preaching about the, the life and the new life and the abundant life and yes, the eternal life that we have as a promise through Jesus, uh, through an inheritance that we receive through Him. Well, I, uh, as just a little aside, my dad, every time when he wore a particular dark blue suit 
would say, Stu, this is my burying suit. And I would go like, well, I really don't want to hear that, Dad. But he'd say, this is my burying suit. I'd say, okay, Dad. And then a couple months later, he would say again, Stu, this is my burying suit. And I would say, yes, Dad. And he said, this suit is my bearing. I said, yes, Dad, I understand. And I don't think it was that he was particularly keen or fond of that suit. I think he was just, you know, sort of a typical frugal Presbyterian, and he didn't want me to go run out and buy a new suit for him. No, this was the suit I was to bury him in. I said, yes, Dad, I understand. So he was buried in his dark blue navy suit. When my mother passed away, uh, and this was kind of odd, she had not given any instructions uh, what she should be dressed in, and which was odd because she was always very particular about what she wore. Uh, she could remember things perfectly. She could, for example, she could describe in great detail an Easter dress that had been made by her grandmother that she wore, I think, when she was either three or four years old. So she was very particular about what she wore, but she gave no instruction. And so I, there was pressure on me uh, to pick the right dress. You know, I was afraid if I uh, erred, you know, she would come back and would haunt me for the rest of my life. Well, so I went through uh, her closet, and um, it's hard to go. Uh, through the closet of uh, a loved one who has passed away because all of their clothes are so personal and they bring back so many memories. And as I was going through, I could even, you know, I could smell my mother's perfume. And um, so I'm going through and I found this. It was a beautiful white, really an off-white dress. It was a beautiful uh, neckline and beautiful long sleeves. and beautiful work around here, and it just, it was exquisite. I said, I think this is the dress. So she was buried in this beautiful off-white dress. So back to the resurrection window. So one Sunday, I look over at the resurrection window before I get up to preach. And you know how you look at something uh, and you miss details in it? You can look at it a hundred times and you miss something important. And I looked at it this one particular Sunday and there uh, uh, to the right of Jesus there was a person and to the left of Jesus there was a person and in this stained glass window and the person to the right was wearing blue and the person to the left was wearing off-white. I thought, yes, exactly. That's exactly the way it will be. Yes, when I pass away and I uh, get to go and see Jesus face to face, um, I'll see my father to the one side of Jesus in his dark blue burying suit, and I will see my mother to the other side of Jesus in her beautiful off-white dress. Because these are our ties to heaven, these wonderful people who've gone before us. So we have this great and mighty inheritance, and it's imperishable. It never, it never fades away, never passes away. And this inheritance um, is is also, it's perfect in the way that it comes about. And it is unfading. Uh, it grows uh, stronger with time. Uh, it becomes more important. We more so want to go to heaven. We more so want to see Jesus and our loved ones. Because, and it's unfading because it shines ever brighter with the light of the eternal. So I long for that day when I receive an inheritance, yes, from my family, an inheritance of faith, 
but an inheritance of love and life and eternal life from Jesus. Thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Great God, indeed we thank you for all these promises which are eternal and are held for us in heaven. We thank you that your promises and your completed work through your son Jesus um, are imperishable. They never pass away. But when we pass away, we are given them as a gift through your son Jesus. Lord, I pray for some person who may be listening to this message today. And I ask that in Jesus' name, uh, the word that you have spoken would bring comfort and strength to their heart. If they are grieving, give them a hope which is held for them, fixed for them in heaven. And grant them a sense of life and new life, an abundant life, and yes, Lord, eternal life in your Son. Lord, I ask all these things and I pray all these things in the strong and the powerful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.